So uh, looking ahead to the joint practices, how excited are you to kind of just go up against another team and have that environment? Yeah, man, super excited, you know, to be able to have the opportunity to go against some uh, other players. And it's going to be a good week, I think, for both teams, get some high, have some high competing in and, um, you know, see how, you know, other guys do versus competition they don't see all the time. So I think uh, both organizations are looking forward to it. Um, you know, it's going to be a good time. We were talking to Brian, there's that line of like, all right, we're getting too competitive, we're getting a little too, too intense. How do you kind of stay in between those lines? You know, I don't know if it's much of a line. You know, you can't go out there going crazy, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a job to be done on both ends. And, you know, it's a competitive game, physical game, and, you know, whatever done will be done. And, um, you know, that's why we do what we do. And that's why, you know, guys play this game. And he was talking about how the practices are kind of more chippy, more interesting yeah. than the game maybe sometimes yeah. because they're, you're, it's a little bit of a different energy in the practice. Yeah, the game definitely, setting. definitely more grimy, definitely more grimy in practice. And that's why you want to make it harder in the practice, you know. Um, so, and definitely it's down to a group of guys you got, man. You know, we got we got some guys who who willing to willing to buckle it up, you know. And uh, so, I mean, that come down to the character of the team, but a controlled um, aggression is probably what we want to go with the most. Did you feel like last year against Miami that helped? Um, the joint practice. I think it was cool. That was my first experience with a joint practice. I had fun and to be able to see go against a uh, competition from another you know organization in the preseason for a couple of days was was good and a good experience. So I mean, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed it and uh, from my one experience that I've had. So um, I'm, I'm excited to have two this year. It doesn't happen on every rep, but when you, but when you have AL one on one against against Chris, do you enjoy those? That's two high level guys going against each other. How are those battles, and do you think they're yeah, you know, it's been highly competitive between me and Chris for years, and I think it makes us both better pros and both, you know, and, um, but I mean, just going against each each one of them guys across the line, man, I mean, Elijah's been doing a great job for us, man. It's been encouraged to have him come in and do a good job, and he's been a highly competitive dude, and uh, so, I mean, them, them two guys, you know, I can't get much better work than that, so, I mean, I'm, I'm super, super excited to have them on my team, and, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Chris is a special, is a special player, and uh, he gonna be doing doing good for a long time. Do you ever kind of have a dialogue with those guys if you win a rep or they do? Is there any kind of back and forth like here? Here's how I got you that. Time. I mean, you can have a dialogue. I, I, I don't. I mean, I think you can talk about it sometime, but it ain't really like. To, for me, the competitive nature, you know, it happened yeah. in the moment. You know, I don't think talking about it, you got to make adjustments. We pros out here. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm not about to sit here and say, oh, well, this is in the, the, but I mean, you could talk about it, but that ain't really my stilo, you know, and I just, I just don't, I wouldn't even ask for his, you know what I'm saying? Because I got to do how I need to do what I need to do. And he might have the different process, but that's how I handle my business. So, I mean, I don't know about that. As you move into the second and third preseason games here, do you feel like you're, at a good spot for this point in the uh, in the preseason, and by you I mean the entire defensive line. I think um, you know every day is a new day. We just grinding, stacking the days, man, stacking the days. We in the middle of camp and just uh, got two preseason games left. You know you got guys competing for spots and uh, guys trying to uh, you know get better day in day out. I think if you look at the whole picture, it can become overwhelming. So as long as you take a day in and day out and just stack the days, everything else will take care of itself. Freddie, what's it mean to have your family there each week? And I know your baby was there the other night for the first time, but Mom travels all these games. Mm -hmm. Just maybe for a future story, what's that mean? Uh, you know, I mean a lot. You know, to have have my family support. Uh, you know, my mom has never have never missed a game, um, and you know she gonna make it happen regardless. You know, so that means the world to me. Uh, me having my first child, having my son, has just been um, has been amazing. Uh, my girlfriend, his mother, she has been amazing support for me and uh, started my whole family. So I mean, it's been it's been really good. It's been a blessing. And uh, it's been extended family as well. You know, people tapped in with me from, uh, you know, all across the country just supporting me and wanting to see me do good. And uh, so, I mean, it, it, it means a lot, man. It definitely take a village. And, uh, but, but um, you know, I, could, I, could, I couldn't be blessed with a better situation. And I'm grateful, grateful for that. And, um, I mean, it's just super cool. You know, we had the um, uh, open practice last night at the stadium. And I was just running around with my little dude, man. Mm -hmm. uh, he got his Jared stuff on, and just it's just mm -hmm. it's really surreal, you know. Because at the camp last time, he was he was in that stomach, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> kicking and stuff. I think he he, uh, he might have felt what was going on, but he didn't see it. So just to see him uh, become more aware and just see what's going on, he come on the field and run around. And so I mean, like I said, like I said in the interview last year, just talking about you know at this point in my life, you know, it's about leaving a good legacy, you know. For my family and building building that and you know making making the family name great you know make people proud when they hear that name and uh, so that's one of the biggest things I'm proud of is just the uh, um, pride that I can give my family and the experiences and um, you know it's about giving back and they give me so much too you know so it's a, definitely a team effort and uh, 
you know, I uh, thank God every day, you know, for them and for their protection and continued support. And, you know, because I, I, it's, it's a journey we all do together. I'll return. How do you sort that out sometimes? Or do you feel like you know what you want to do there? I mean, again, this our roster, when you talk about the pump return room, the returners, we have, um, uh, we're have we very fortunate here to have a, a bunch of different guys that could catch field punts, which is not easy to do, Mike. And when you talk about that position, the number one thing that we're looking for is one, decision making and ball security. Because anybody, you can have a guy that's dynamic with the football, but if they're not making the right decisions and they're not catching the ball properly and having ball security, then that goes out, that goes, you can just throw that in the back burner when it comes to being a returner. Right now, all of our guys are making great decisions when it comes to practice. We only had one opportunity in the game, but you get fast forward, you could move forward. Let's talk about kickoff return. Like you had Cam back there, you had um, Avery Williams back there. I thought they did a great job this past week in making great decisions when it came to when to take the ball out, when not to take the ball out. So those are the two top things, decision making, ball security. What you see on kick return translate in some ways to punt return when you're making a decision maybe on a punt returner since, since the theory of Cordero being a kick returner still exists? <laughs> I thought D-Lev was going to be the returner, all right? That's what we, 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 we talked about that. Yeah. On Madden, right? Madden, okay. <laughs> I got to see that tape. We got to pull that up. Return right. right, you got a ball set up. Return right, you went left. All right. So when you talk about. <laughs> That's good, on Mike. All right, so when we talk about kickoff returners, I know there's two different spots because as a punt returner, the, you can't control when the coverage is going to be downfield based on the hang time, based on how far that ball is being punted. On kickoff, you think theoretically it's going to be about 30 to 25 yards of space when you do catch the ball. So when it comes to decision making, um, there are two different things because there's two different ball flights, there's two different rotations on the ball, and the coverage is in different spots when you talk about when the ball is being caught. So we try to you know match those guys up, but I think you, that's why CP is a kickoff returner. That's why there's guys that could do both. That's why there's guys that could just do punt return. And you just got to make sure that we're putting our guys in the right position, understanding the rules of the game, and then making sure they're making the right decisions when it comes to that play. When you're evaluating, oh. like maybe Avery or, Cam or Cameron back there. Like oh, yes. About. Yes. You want to be able to, when our defense makes a stop and we get to fourth down, the number one thing is that we make sure we have the ball the next play. We got to have the ball the next play. Our defense worked too hard to get that stop. And then that ball is being transitioned to us. We have to secure the football. And you, that's the worst thing that could happen is you get you put your defense back out there. And now they're back out there. And now that offense that we're going against has better field position. So that's the biggest thing right there. How has uh, uh, Bradley been so far since you guys have got him out? He's been doing a great job, you know, getting in our program, understanding what we want to accomplish on special teams, uh, on field goal, punts, kickoffs. He's been great for the room. He's been great for Koo. He's been great for our, our other core players when it comes to special teams. And again, um, his best days are yet to come in his profession, and we're excited to have him. What was your reaction to when, to when he got signed? Because he is an established veteran, the guy who's done it. I mean, as an organization, I can speak for us, we're, we were excited to have a guy that's been a special teams captain, Super Bowl champ, you know, has, has had a great career so far, and he's continuing to get better and grow. And overall, he's a good human being, you know, both on and off the field. You, like, guys like being around him. He's a leader by example. He works hard at his craft. And you can see he, he looks at helping others get better around him. And that's what we're looking for here. Thank you, Cesar. Is there ever any question that CP is going to be back there? I know he's one of the greatest kick returner, maybe the greatest kickoff returner of all time. Is there ever a thought that maybe because of his workload offensively, he may not be back? I mean, there's always those thoughts, whether, you know, based on his workload, based on what type of team we're going against. And I know I've kind of answered this question before. It's a week by week uh, process and decision when it comes to who's going to be our kickoff returner. Yes, we love CP to be back there, and he wants to be back there. And do we want him to break the record? For sure we want him to break a record. The guys that are out there blocking for him, wants him to, they want him to break the record. And But the number one thing is we want to help our team win. Just so happen if we do it while helping our team win, that's, that's a bonus, you know. But when it comes to that decision making, you know, it's just a case by case, week by week, depending on what type of team we're going against. Let's say we're going against a team, all they're doing is just hitting touchbacks. Well, 
it just serves no purpose if they're hitting it out the back of the end zone to put them back there when it comes to that. But if we're going against a team and we know that we like what we have, whether it's on our offensive staff, what we were doing, our special teams, what we're doing, of course, we would love to have him back there. And I know that he wants to be back there, and everybody in, in our special teams room wants him back there to be our returner. What makes him that guy back there? What makes him a great kickoff returner? I mean, he's fearless. I mean, he runs full speed while people are running full speed at him. Anybody can run a 4-4, four, four, but it takes a different person and different mentality to run full speed while people are running full speed at them. You get you know what I'm saying? When that aspect, vision, break tackle ability, uh, that's what it like comes to. And guys like, and I, I think his personality is a big thing too, who he is as a person, because guys love going out there and playing hard for him. You know, you could have a guy that, out there that doesn't probably doesn't have the best attitude or whatever, and that guy might block, but he might not block as hard because he doesn't really care for that person. And in the locker room and on the field, you can see guys are all working hard with, with each other, for each other, and CP is one of those guys that he's always been a great teammate to his, his teammates. How important is versatility, especially with the young rookies that are coming in, those late draft picks that they might not have a chance to really stick, but you can do something on special teams to push you forward? That's a that's the way to get a helmet on Sunday. As a, as, if you're not starting on offense or defense, you better be starting on special teams, and you better put yourself in a position uh, where you can help on all four phases, five phases if, if possible. And it could not just only be a court player; it could be an offensive lineman helping us on field goal. It could be a defensive lineman helping us on field goal block or a punt rush. And Again, they could, it's all across the board, not just the late round picks. It's anybody that's on this team. If, if you can help us on special teams and you can help us gain a first down in the return game or control field position in the coverage game, we're going to put you on the field because it's an extension of our offense and defense. So a guy like D'Angelo Malone, for example, or something like that, how can he help like, on special teams if he gets out there? I mean, he's going to make his role whatever he wants it to be. We're going to continue to coach him, uh, put, provide him with tools to be successful on the field on all four phases. And he provides a lot of versatility to answer your question. He's a physical player. He could play in space. He could run. Um, he could block in space. So those things are attributes that he does bring to the table. But he's a physical and aggressive player. And that's the mindset. And that's, the, that's what we're looking for on special teams. Yeah, Coach Lassie. Uh, uh, Vernon, is he a kid that uh, has an NFL leg that, you know, probably, you know, sometimes you see guys get cut and they come back in, in other, you know, venues and so forth. But is he a guy that, uh, you know, might be a fit in that category? One, we're very blessed to have Seth here. He does have a very strong and talented leg at the play at this level. And, you know, I wish him nothing but the best. And when it comes to that position and him, you know, playing and his future in the NFL, but he is talented and he's going to, again, his best days are yet to come in this profession. And I'm excited for him, whatever that may be. Uh, Coach, how did you feel the, um, the quarterback did in the first outing there? Yeah, I think first and foremost, there's a couple of things we wanted to accomplish with the quarterbacks. Um, get out there and get out of the huddle with tempo. Um, get us into the uh, logistically, the motion landmarks, the right plays. So we wanted to see that from a mental standpoint. And then physically, right, we wanted their instincts to take over. So go through your reads, your progressions, um, and then obviously allow yourself to continue to move the ball down the field. And uh, you saw it in the first drive with Marcus, not everything played out exactly perfectly, um, but he found a way to continue with the rest of the offense to keep the chains going and find the end zone. And so for us, right, things to coach off of, but more importantly, we want to see these guys go out, lead, uh, which we felt they did. And, um, you know, there's things to coach on, but we'll get better from it. And uh, the running back, the one thing, uh, the one quote after the game was Quadra said, there were lanes, <laughs> like, like there were holes to run through. Um, and I guess yeah. there might not have been. And, uh, no, I think what, you know, with Q, obviously he had some runs there that um, allowed him to get some extra yardage. And I think what we all did a good job of from the offensive perspective with the players, uh, their ability to execute what was asked. And again, nothing happens by one player doing something supernatural. All 11 guys have to be on the same page. And there was times that we were, and there's times that um, we need to coach uh, better and make sure they are. But for the most part, for the first outing, I thought guys played fast. What, uh, what type of work do you want to get uh, when you all see the Jets and they got another practice yeah. team. But, but, uh, yeah, it's great to go against another opponent, uh, an opponent that, uh, you know, defensively uh, will give us a different look in terms of how they play their fronts, uh, some of their structures in the back end. 
And for training camp, it allows us to go back to some of our base rules and the quarterbacks have to apply them as well as the rest of the offense. And there's always, you know, when you're a player and you go against the same guy over and over in training camp, then you go against a different competitor and a different team in practice setting. Like it does bring a different element of energy. Um, and these guys are all competitors. Uh, they play hard between the whistles, but they're also professionals and know how to do that. And it's exciting for all of us to go out there and, and compete against somebody else to get better. Um, and it allow us to challenge ourselves in a different way, uh, which these guys have done a good job of accepting challenges and moving on. How's the line uh, progressing? Yeah, I think from the line's perspective, right? And again, I'm, I'm not the first person up here to say anything about competition, but uh, what you see out there is a bunch of guys um, going out in different units and playing to the best of their ability and pushing each other. And that starts really pre-practice all the way through. And for right now, what the guys are asked to do, uh, they're getting pushed by Coach Ledford, and they're responding. And so we've got more weeks to continue to do that, to gel. But from where they're at, they're pushing hard and they're challenging yourself. With Brian Edwards back 100%, what's the difference with having him on the field 100% versus not? Well, I mean, first and foremost, just having him out there to go through the reps, right, and get the timing with the quarterbacks. And that's really for anybody who's, you know, been in and out of the lineup. This is what training camp's for. We're trying to build chemistry. We're trying to build rhythm. And so for him or anybody else who's missed time to come back out there, obviously it's, it's a good thing for the offense. Um, and we're going to continue to grow with all the players that will be on the field. And it does obviously help from the quarterback perspective to, to build that timing and trust. When it comes to that, I know we're still a couple weeks away from a 53-man cut down, but this wide receiver group I feel like is very interesting. You have a lot of different body types, a lot of different guys who can provide a lot of different things. When y'all are going through these evaluation processes, what is kind of going through your head in terms of like who sure. we need when versus? Yeah, I think well, that's a great question. I do think for the most part, what we try to set up is the ability to compete, regardless of your body type, right? There's a certain way that we like to play football. Um, and these guys are going in and first and foremost, you got to know your assignment and you got to play with a certain intent. And you see these guys go out each and every day. Guys are getting better from where we got them in the spring to where they are today. And for the most part, what you want to see is you want to see guys go out there and push, not the Josh themselves, but each other. That group right now, they're pushing each other. And it's great to see. It's bringing out their personalities, but it's also bringing out the competitiveness. And it's a great battle in there right now really interesting that y'all, I know Felipe is doing what Felipe is doing right now, but you're only really carrying two quarterbacks. How do you kind of navigate that and making sure that you're not overworking someone in this very sure. competitive time where you have them throwing a lot of breath? Yeah, and I think we, you know, we make sure we monitor the amount of throws, right, first and foremost for anybody out there. Second thing is, you know, when it comes to the quarterback spot, the way that practice is set up, you know, we have the ability to tempo how many throws are needed in between the team periods. So if we feel we're light one day, we can push. If we feel we're too heavy one day, we can back off. And obviously, Felipe provides that flexibility for us um, in practice and in individual drills where he's still working his quarterback craft with obviously spending time at the other position. Uh, he's accepted that role. He's embraced it. And I think the, the other two quarterbacks obviously understand the uniqueness of that, um, and they appreciate that from him. Um, one more for me. How have you kind of seen Frank Darby kind of progress through this training camp? Yeah, I mean, you know, we had Frank last year and you, you bring him Frank as a rookie. Um, there's things that Frank showed on film that he came here and he showed. There's things that Frank needed to grow with just like any other player. Um, and just like all our players, with you, in this system another year, uh, there's definitely a comfortable level of what's asked. Um, there's no new voices in terms of me up there or Coach Smith uh, talking to him. So it's one of those things where like just everybody in that receiver room, Frank included, those guys, they brought a level of competitiveness, and you see that from Frank and everybody else. I wanted to ask you about Tyler Algier, just how comfortable you feel like he is in this offense. You know, obviously, as a rookie, there's mm -hmm. kind of a learning curve there, but he had a lot of playing time in college. You know, sure. Do you feel like he's kind of stepped up and started to do some of the little things so well that can get him playing time on the past block? Do you know? Yeah, and I think you know, Coach Petrie's done a great job of uh, being able to facilitate the reps for the backs. Um, there's a great competition there, just like the receiver room and really a lot of the rooms, right? And so what you see from him and everybody else is when they get their opportunity, like they value it. They understand that reps are a premium just because of how they're divvied up. 
And again, they're taking advantage. It's not just him, but they're all taking advantage of their opportunity. You saw it in the game and you come out here and see it in practice. So it's exciting to see where that group's going right now. Last one. Uh, Drake's not out here, and it feels weird to ask this about a rookie, but him not being out here, does that just give more reps to more guys? How's it kind of changed the, I guess, progression for the rest of the sure. guys that are in the last Yeah, I think right now, obviously, regardless if it was Drake or another receiver where Brian Edwards was out a day or two, um, yeah, it just changes the rotation. You know, different guys competing at different spots. Um, but what's great about this group offensively is, regardless of who is in or out of the lineup, we mix in personnel. You just see guys willing to do whatever and wanting to compete. Um, that has been how we've approached everything. And you can see it in the receiver room, and you can see it in all the rooms, and, and they've done it regardless of who's in there and who's not. Do you like where this offense kind of is at this point of the preseason game out the way? you got a joint practice coming up. Do you like where things kind of are? Yeah, I mean, we're trending, right? We have, obviously, the ability each and every day to, to work on something fundamentally. Um, we're obviously not there yet. That's what training camp's for. Um, we'll have a great challenge this week. We'll have a great challenge next week. And then obviously on week one to prepare for a great opponent in New Orleans, um, what they provide defensively. So this is what you do in training camp, right? You, f you get through the fundamentals, you try to get better at them, and there's things X and O wise that you're seeing how they fit the players. And obviously our job as coaches to make sure that we highlight their strengths. And that's what we're trying to find out right now in some of the players and make sure that we're playing to their best of ability.